What's going on everyone? This is Jim from RC After Dark. <laughs> I almost said JCRC. Uh, this is an early unboxing video. I was not expecting to get this box in the mail today. It wasn't supposed to show up until next Tuesday. Uh, today is Friday, October 6, 2017. And uh, the package wasn't supposed to show up until the 10th. So nevertheless, we will have an unboxing video going on here. Uh, what was supposed to show up today was the parts for the Amphibious WL Toys, which is sitting in front of us. Um, all those parts did show up, so as soon as I get done with this video, I'm going to slap that guy back together. Um, you have a medley of uh, pinion gears that I can mess with, and um, new drive shafts front and rear. Uh, might as well show you the drive shafts. Since we're here, this is an unboxing video, so stay, stay tuned there. Don't mean to deviate here too much. So we got some Entergy drive shafts. Manufacturer number C2650. Oops, sorry. C26502 in blue. Um, I believe it was cheaper than $32.99. That wasn't the actual price that I paid. So we got an aluminum rear drive shaft and a steel front drive shaft. The aluminum rear drive shaft is, uh, if I can pull apart, it is telescoping. So hopefully that will hold up to the ponies that we're throwing at it. And a couple pinion gears. All right, to the unboxing video. Like I said, this wasn't supposed to show up until um, until next Tuesday. I do have more parts that were supposed to show up, uh, or that are still going to show up on Tuesday for the thing that we're about to unbox. So uh, let's get to it here. I'm going to pause the camera real quick and we'll change our view. All right, we are back. I tried to move the camera back as far as I could to uh, get you guys in view here. Roll the old sleeves. Oh, I'm sorry, you guys probably aren't getting the best view here. Eh? Maybe that's on purpose. And kapow, there she be. New little toy. And the view changed instantly. <laughs> this is a N NQD tear into jet boat. Um, you know, I'm always running up and down on that one river with my TF2 um, and the amphibious WL toys. It really looked like a good video or a good river to shoot some video on. So, um, you know, that boat looked like it would be a real, real good time on that river. <laughs> uh, excuse me for getting a little tongue tied there. Uh, nevertheless, I figured it was time uh, to add a boat into the mix, and uh, like I said, it's a real shallow river, um, a lot of rocks on the bottom, cobblestone and whatnot. It's like a like the Rubicon Trail underwater. Uh, jet boat is ideal. Anything with a prop is just going to get torn up. Uh, I've seen a lot of videos on these jet boats. Um, first place that I actually seen them was on RC Sparks channel, old uh, medic there. Seen them on his channel and they looked really, really cool, but uh, I just, you know, I've had lots of boats in the past and uh, don't really get too much use out of it, but a jet boat, it's it's a different story. You know, now you're just not ripping around on a lake in a circle. You can actually, you know, run over some relatively rough terrain um, as far as submerged rocks and uh, sticks and logs and whatnot. So, and, you know, small little waterfalls. So, uh, yeah, nevertheless, that would be the reason behind the uh, the new toy here. So let's pan around here and get a look at it, I guess. I've been talking my ear off here, or talking your ears off here. Um, this comes in two different colors, white and yellow. The yellow actually looks kind of orange in my, uh, in my eyes. But uh, I figured I was going to repaint this anyways. I'd like to start off with white. It's a good base coat to repaint with, uh, or to repaint on, I should say. So... Um, I figured it'd be better off just starting with the white one. 
could have got the, the yellow one or the orange one. But, uh, you know, I'd have to paint it white to start off with before I repaint it. So went with the white. What we got here? This boat is powered by a... Hmm, let me get the focus on going here, guys. Uh, this boat is, boat is powered by a 390 type racing motor, which produces tremendous power. Professionally designed and manufactured. What's that say? PG twin propeller, which not only provides huge thrust, but is not easy to be damaged as well. Vector push design, easy to be controlled, professional. High capacity rechargeable battery and uh, quick battery charger makes the boat a long time high speed race. Sure, <laughs> there's big plans coming for this guy. 27 MHC. Wow, old old school, old school. All right, let's uh, get some more views here. Sorry about this. Including ages 14 and up, boat controller. 9.6 volt rechargeable NICAD battery, charger, 9 volt battery, propeller, boat rack, instruction manual. And there would be the, oops, sorry about the flash, the quote unquote yellow one, which appears to be orange. Another picture of the so called yellow one there. What do we got here? Professional large torsion propeller, large. Capacity rechargeable battery, powerful high speed motor, RC system included. So you got forward, you got left, you got right, you got no reverse. Basic design on the controller, 9 volt battery, goes on the bottom of the handle. Keep saying controller, it's a radio. And here we are magically looking at the top half of the box. Now, I purchased this, I purchased this off the internet, uh, eBay to be specific. There were several different sites that were selling these boats. Um, I paid a little bit more than the uh, average cost, I guess. Um, definitely less than 100 bucks. But uh, this, was, this was one of the only uh, sales places that actually tests their stuff. So the gentleman that was selling this tested it on 925.17. Today is 10.617. He also includes some additional instructions with his. To ensure your boat operates, should be at peak performance. Here are a few tips after a few runs. Apply some 3-in-1 oil through the plastic water intake on the underside of, uh, of the boat. To lube the propeller shaft. His second tip is remove the four screws at the rear where the water output is. Um, put a little bit of grease inside the bushing. The prop shaft rotates inside the bushing, and if not, if not greased every so often, it will wear out the it will wear out the bushing. Hmm. Some poor grammar. Sorry, buddy. Uh, it'll wear out the bushing. Make sure when you re reassemble it, the two lower screws may be a little shorter than the upper screws. Uh, doing these steps is the only maintenance you need to perform. Well, three in one oil, that's a good idea um, on the prop shaft. Um, probably better off with some actual prop grease or whatever. Um, probably that cow RC. <laughs> I've never done any shopping with cow, R cow RC, but I've heard a lot of good things. Uh, so I'll probably have to get some uh, cow RC stuff for that. Um, as far as the bushing, you definitely want to make sure to uh, grease up that brute, that bronze bushing every once in a while. Uh, if that wears out, uh, it's going to end up chewing up the impeller. All right, so that's a view at the top of the box. And once again, yeah, there was a lot of different sites that had these boats for sale. A lot of them over in the UK. And um, they were less than $50. So um, you can pick one of these up for less than $50 if you want to wait the extra time for the extra time for the shipping. I didn't necessarily want to wait for shipping. Plus this guy tests all his stuff. 
um, to make sure that it floats and that everything works and that there's no leaks. So um, I figured that was, you know, a nice way to go. And if we flip the box around and upside down, basically, they show a whole slew of boats and hovercrafts that this company makes. Sorry about the flash, there's going to be a crazy glare here. It looks like a, uh, sorry this is so unprofessional, eh? Looks like a false, false outboard there. I'm sure the flash is just glaring. It reminds me of the old Tyco Typhoons back in the day. The hovercrafts, I owned a couple of those. Tyco version. Jet ski, a bunch of boats, a couple catamarans, Miss Budweiser style boat. Yeah, they make a lot of different stuff here. A little submarine. All right, what else have we got here? Battery compartment, on-off switch, the battery charger, the back half of the jet. Man, this flash is just going to be killing us, isn't it? How to remove and replace the batteries. Non-rechargeable batteries are not to be recharged. Recharge batteries, rechargeable batteries are to be removed from the toys before being charged. Rechargeable batteries are only to be charged under adult supervision. Different types of batteries of new and used batteries are not to be mixed. Only batteries of the same equivalent type as recommended are to be used. Batteries are to be inserted with the correct polarity. Exhausted batteries are to be removed from the toy. Supply terminals are not to be short-circuited. Yeah, that's a good idea. You can weld stuff like that. Weld stuff together. All right, well, not to drag this out any further, but let's uh, let's tear into it. <laughs> yeah, I know. That was a bad joke. And we got a little instruction manual with some other battery cautions on there and some battery cautions. Pre-run checklist. How to charge the battery. Use a special charger to charge the rechargeable battery pack included in the set of four. What? Included in the set. For four to five hours or until the battery pack feels warm. Do not charge for too long to avoid damaging the battery pack. Yeah, you know, I uh, we won't be running this system in here for too long. Like I said, we've got an upgrade coming for it. So uh, this baby's going to be going brushless here in a couple days. Um, regardless, I, you know, I really, I don't know about these wall chargers. Uh, they work good in a pinch, I guess, if you don't have anything else. Um, but I highly recommend, you know, that anybody... Uh, just go out and buy a nice digital charger. Uh, you can pick one up for, you know, usually less than six, $60 US. Um, it's just a better way to go. You know, you can maintain how much, uh, you know, you can see how much, of, you know, juice is going into the cells. You can, uh, you know, balance out the battery as it's charging. You can max out your, um, uh, your milliamps and whatnot. And uh, it's just a more complete charge. It's healthier for your battery. Your batteries will last longer. Your vehicles will run longer. It's just better all around. Um, I highly recommend getting a uh, aftermarket charger for sure. And we are really dragging this video out, guys. I am so sorry about that. Like I said, I wasn't expecting to do this today. All right, we'll just pick up the camera here and uh, take a peek at what we got. Looks like we have a radio sitting here. Our 9.6 volt battery pack sitting here, 8 AA's, 9 volt battery there, 
There's our infamous wall charger and the piece de resistance. Z boat. It's a nice looking little boat. Accelerate, tear into. That part actually looks pretty cool, man. I might have to try to figure a way to paint around that. A little jet drive at the back. There's the uh, the output. 27 megahertz. Old school, man. And there's our inlet for the imp impeller. Peek at the top here. Looks like this top uh, comes off here. A couple body pins here. What else we got? I'm looking through the camera too. <laughs> uh, looks like a couple rubber grommets sitting on here. Eh, I'll just pause the camera and, uh, well, maybe not. I don't know. I don't do that much work on camera. Alrighty, underside of the uh, cockpit area of the motor. See where the headers are glued in down there at the bottom. And what we are looking at here, uh, we've got, looks like the battery tray, our uh, main connector coming off the ESC on the inside, or the brain, some uh, wobbly body mounts, and this appears to be a little on-off switch, a little push switch there. Yeah, on, off. All right. Well, she's not going to be like that for too long. Uh, like I said, we'll probably be doing a, hopefully be doing a build video on this on October 10th. Um, like I said, I ordered uh, ordered some stuff for it. I ordered a uh, Traxxas VXLM brushless system. Uh, that would be the motor and ESC that they put in the uh, Traxxas Mini E Revos and some of the other mini vehicles. So we're going to be slapping that guy in here. I might take it out tomorrow and do a little test run with it on the river just to try it out as it is, it, you know, for comparison from stock to uh, uh, to brushless. Well, let's get this guy back together. Ah, you know, one more quick observation. I was putting this back together. I noticed that the battery lead coming out here. It's got like no grommet or anything like that on there. Nothing to uh, stop the water from going down into the boat. And once it does, since this is all sealed up, there's probably no way of getting it back out. So it's probably a good thing that we're going to be cutting this baby open. Plus, I'd like to see how much foam is on the inside and kind of see what kind of want to see what makes it tick. All right, let me get this back together and we'll explore the rest of the container here. All right, she is all back together. Another observation here: the uh, FM or AM antenna. All wound up around the uh, carry handle slash roll bar. All right, let's take a look at the radio. Sorry about the camera, guys. Pretty basic little uh, plastic radio here. Almost looks like a ray gun from the 80s. Oh, pachoo, pachoo, pachoo. Sorry. <laughs> uh, let's see here. A little basic steering wheel. Kind of feels like plastic, like a hard plastic, not really uh, too rubbery. Well, it'd almost be better if it was like a joystick where you could move it left or right. No reverse, on off switch, and where you would install the battery. 
Moving on, we've got our 9.6 volt. And this is a 700 milliamp. They said long life, those liars. NICAD, 700 milliamp, that's not gonna last too long. And what do we got here? We've got a nine volt down here, it looks like. Colorful, not really, it's just black and green, a little bit of chrome. <laughs> There's our nine volt. Hey, what's this? A couple of Allen wrenches, or an eight Allen wrench, two Allen wrenches. We've got a couple of Allen wrenches in there. All right, always use more Allen wrenches. And our wall charger. Ah, uh, of course, my focus. Man, this is the worst unboxing ever, eh? Hey, let's get around to the back half. See if there's anything good back here. Well, we got an antenna for the radio. Looks like a plastic tube for the uh, main antenna coming off the boat. And this looks like a stand for the boat, possibly. Hmm. And yes, it is. 757 radio controlled mosquito craft. I'd imagine that's the front of the boat. Open that this at the back of the boat. This would be the uh, this would be the boat prop props. Hey, there we go. Not too shabby. Yeah, that is a good looking little boat. All right, well, uh, that concludes the unboxing, I guess. I think we got everything covered. Found our antennas. Covered our boat. Got our uh, little tray there, which is pretty sweet. And you know what? In anticipation for this boat, I actually went out to Myers late last night and bought some material. Um, I might attempt to buy, or to buy, to build a trailer. Um, if I'm unsuccessful, I might have to try to buy one, but, uh, nevertheless, I'm going to try to b build a trailer for this thing. Um, I, I, well, I guess I'll just show you what I bought for it. All right. I went out and picked up some wood. Where the wood come from magically appeared. Um, I believe this is like a seven eighths or five eighths. And this, I want to say is half inch, some half inch stock. Make sure that they're all straight, and I'm going to see if I can build a trailer for it. We shall see. I'm sure it's not going to be too pretty. <laughs> so, yeah, I figured I'd probably use this stuff uh, to try to come up with the main frame on the trailer, um, the thinner pieces for the bunks on the trailer. Um, the bunks would be what supports, supports the boat. I bought some felt strips to put on the bunks like carpet on a normal uh, trailer bunk. And I also bought this, uh, what is this thing? This is a fishing stick, fishing sticks. I picked this up at my local Meyer store too in the sporting goods section. And this is an expandable stick that you would drive down on the ground to support your fishing rod. It is telescoping as well. It has a couple of different positions on there where it uh, locks into position. So I'm thinking about using this for the tongue on the trailer, uh, just cutting off this plastic piece up top and making that into the uh, main uh, hitch on the trailer. Like I said, this does slide out. Let me, uh, let me put the camera down. All right, so this does slide apart. And it locks into place. A couple little spots here where it locks in.
and right down here like an umbrella all the way up to the end so it's pretty long that's what she said <laughs> oh, spur of the moment uh, so yeah if I figured maybe an expanding uh, expanding tongue on the trailer that way I could uh, change the length up if I had a bigger boat um, probably I probably have to come up with a way to keep this from expanding because um, once it starts expanding it just keeps on going so I don't know don't know if it's gonna work or not but was just thinking maybe uh, an expandable tongue on the trailer um, just so it's adjustable and there we go this was our uh, it pretty much does it I guess for this uh, unexpected unboxing <laughs> Like I said, I was not expecting to get the uh, NQD tear into boat today. Uh, that was supposed to show up on Wednesday, October 10th, and uh, or Tuesday, October 10th, and uh, it showed up. So, uh, nevertheless, a lot of projects on the table, guys. Uh, sorry to drag this video out. I hope you guys are still tuned in. Um, gonna be putting a brushless system into the NQD probably next week. Uh, that's when the speed controller and uh, motor are supposed to show up. Going to be working on the WL Toys tonight, the Amphibious Brushless WL Toys, and put in a new pinion gear, hook up the new drive shafts, get that thing good to go for tomorrow. And then hopefully later on this weekend, I know I said this last weekend, but hopefully later on this weekend, I'll get to the, to the uh, TF2 and we'll jack that thing up and put the bigger tires on that. And just to recap... Uh, TF2, going to get a suspension lift, getting a set of four of these 2.2 Boom Racing aluminum wheels uh, and furnace, I believe is the, the design on that wheel, putting on these relatively large 2.2 Super Swampers, um, not XL, just standard 2.2 Super Swampers, but once again, they are a uh, relatively large tire, especially when you compare it to that. 2.8 sandpaw big tire so we're gonna jack this guy up get those tires underneath it and we're also putting on a set of axles front and rear here's the new front axle boom racing as well with a 45 degree turning radius which should help this vehicle overall in its off-road performance and we already put on the uh, boom racing low profile transfer case mount or high clearance transfer case mount so lots of projects guys lots of projects um <laughs> and i was toying with the idea of making a custom cap for the back of the truck like pulling out the toolbox and a spare tire carrier and using this old uh this old wing here off of Darth Vader's, uh, whatchamacallit, TIE Fighter. This is from the 80s. So <laughs> was toying with the idea of uh, using a TIE Fighter wing for a cap. But uh, yeah, nevertheless, lots of projects going on here, guys. Lots of projects. Um, and I might even put another jet drive in that boat, too. Of all things, right? I haven't even ran it yet, and I'm already shopping for jet drives. Uh, there's a few different companies that were making jet drives touch base on this before we leave this video um, there's actually a guy in Macomb Michigan I'm trying to get a get a hold of him right now who makes a nice jet drive it looks I don't know if it's any larger than this one I think it is a little bit larger as far as you know it's intake and whatnot and exhaust but uh, it has a reverse on it um, and it is plastic it's not aluminum or anything but it has a little bucket on the back that uh, is servo activated that drops down over top of the uh, the jet on the back of the boat and then there's a little oval cut in the back of the jet. Let's get right to it. There's a little oval cut in the jet, jet back here. Right here. And this little bucket comes down over top of the jet and redirects the water um, to give you a reverse or a little bit of a reverse. Um, and then you would hit the servo and pull that bucket back off and you'd be moving forward again. So kind of looking into that as well. Um, I figure if I'm in there and I'm replacing the motor, you know, it'd be kind of cool to have a reverse, I guess. Don't know how well it works or not. I, don't, I haven't really seen any in action, but um, it looked like it would be a good investment. So lots of projects. Once again, going to be working on WL Toys tonight, just to recap. 
new pinion gear, new drive shafts. Probably work on that guy uh, tomorrow night, the TF2, and start lifting it up and putting on the new tires and wheels and axles. And then next Tuesday, when the speed controller shows up, or whenever the speed controller shows up, maybe it'll show up before Tuesday. Um, we'll put that all that mess into the uh, Terran, the NQD Terran to uh, jet boat there. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, very much appreciated. Uh, this is Jim from RC After Dark. I almost said JCRC once more. Uh, from RC After Dark. And uh, well, click like and subscribe as always. Share with your friends as always. And uh, yeah, as always, if you need a if you want to leave a comment, feel free to leave a comment. And uh, you guys all have a great night. We'll see you on the next video. Thanks again.